In this lesson, we're going to talk about some of the principles of object-oriented programming. So let's head into Xcode. And in here, I'm going to get started with a new application, and I'm going to call it Classes and Objects. And the very first thing that we want to understand is what are even classes and objects, and what do they basically stand for? The very first thing to talk about is that we have already been using classes, at least one class, the class of view controller. And now we want to understand what it is and why do we use them. A class in theory and in more programmatic terms basically is the blueprint of doing something. We call it a blueprint. Now, let me explain to you what a blueprint basically means and why do we call it like that. Let's say we're writing an application that needs to translate some language to another one. Let's say from English to French for any reason. Now, one approach of doing this would be that every time that we need this, we could actually write our English translator. We could write something that takes the word, translates it into English, and then pops it back. And then the next time that we need it, we could rewrite that entire program. That obviously doesn't seem very intuitive. It would make more sense that we would have some sort of a repository that was our translation code. And then every time that we needed it, we would just call that one. That's how OOP or that's how classes and objects they basically work. You have this repository that we call the class. It works as the blueprints for a new translator. Every time that we need the translator, we call it. It does some work for us and then we get rid of it. The view controller class does exactly the same thing. When the view loads, it shows it to us. But then when we navigate to another view, it basically destroys the view controller and gets rid of it. The reason we want to get rid of the objects is simply because we don't want to add to our memory. We don't want to have so many objects stuck in our memory, which is going to slow down our application. Now, let's put all of this theory behind us and let's see how we can actually write a class and how we could make it function for us the way that we want them to work. Let's say I want to write a class that that class does what we just talked about, a translation. So I'm going to say class and that is called translate class. And my translate class, there are usually two very important parameters of any class that we have to take care of. One of them is basically the properties. So properties. In here, I'm going to say I have one property called language. And that language property is of the type a string. So these are called properties, things that a class has. And then the other part of it is basically functions things that a class does. Functions is something that we talked about uh, extensively in our previous lesson. So by now, you should be quite familiar with them. Functions, they basically do things for us. For instance, I could go in here and say I have a function. This function is called translate. So translate and the translate function takes a word. Let's say it takes an input word, which is of the type a string, and then it's going to return back to us uh, the translation of that. So again, the return of it is another string. So this translate basically takes the word and then returns it back to us. Now, we could do some other stuff in this function. For instance, we could test for the language that we are interested in. I could say if language was German, for instance, if that was the case, then obviously we return the German translation of it. And then if the else part of it was true, we do something else. Now, what we do in here is kind of irrelevant right now because I'm mainly interested in understanding the purpose of classes. Obviously, this function is expecting some sort of return. So I could actually go ahead and say variable, let's call it a result. And that result is a string, which by default is empty. And then here in the German or other languages, we decide about it. And then finally, we say return our result. Now, for instance, if the word that we were to translate was always statically the word of hello, I would say if the language was German, then the result would become hello. And then if the word uh, or the language was Spanish, would say uh, the word would become uh, hola or something to that effect. Obviously, this is really not functioning right now. And that's not the whole goal in here. The goal in here is understanding that the classes, they basically have properties and they have functions. Now, the more important part of this whole thing becomes a matter of, so how do we actually use this thing? We have a class, it's supposed to be doing translation. And we talked about earlier on that whenever we need the translation, we make one copy of this one, we use it, and then we get rid of it. 
So how do we do all of these things? Let's go ahead into our actual class, which is our view controller. This is the one that opens up our application. And there is an entry point to it. The entry point to it is the view did load, which means this will be called no matter what. So it doesn't really need us to manually call it as opposed to this guy, the class that we actually have to manually make a call to it. So the view did load will happen no matter what. And here, I want to actually make myself one copy of my translator. And to do that, we actually have to make a variable out of it. We actually have to call uh, a new version of it, which we call instantiating, and or basically we make an instance of it. Instantiating means making a new copy or a new object of our class. The name of this lesson was classes and objects. So the class, the blueprint, we write it just once, the objects, we write them as many times as we need. Let's go ahead and say, I want to have a, a German translator. So I'm going to come in here and say, let my German translator, and that becomes translate. Trans, uh, if I find it, it doesn't autocomplete for me for some reason. Translate, and then that's about it. So I made a copy of my translator called my German translate. And in here, I could do these things, for instance. I could say my German translate dot language, it automatically finds that. I'm going to say the language of it is, let's say, German. And then I could actually call the functions of it. I could, for instance, say my German translate dot function of translate. And the word that I'm interested in, in is hello. Now, as you can imagine, the same thing as it happened in our functions is going to happen in here because this function translate the word hello basically returns something it returns a string and the string that it returns let's say it is hello or hola and if that happens basically here it's in the middle of our code we have written hello which obviously again is uh, meaningless now we have to decide about what we want to do with the result of our class for instance I'm going to come in here and I'm going to say let uh, result translated or translated result become that value. So basically take the instance of my of my class and then from the instance of my class do the translation for this word. Whatever is the result of it, put it within a new variable and then whatever we decide to do uh, with this variable. Now, let me go ahead into another example that hopefully is going to make things a little bit more clearer. In this example, I want to write a class for my users. Imagine I'm writing an application, which is some sort of a uh, pretty much any kind of application, but the more prominent example would be a social media application that there are many, many users. Each user has a name, each user has a photo, each user has a UID, and then uh, we want to build that uh, user class. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to get rid of all of these. You feel free to comment them out or start a new application. And in here, I'm going to write my user class. So I'm going to say class user. And then for my user, I have these things. Every user has a name. So that's for sure has to be there. Every user, I'm going to say it has a photo name. A photo name is basically the name of the image that is on their avatar. Every user has a unique ID, so we basically recognize them using this ID simply because their name could be similar between two different uh, people. And that's pretty much all I want to create for my users. Now, every time that I want to initialize one of these, I want to build one of these users, I also want to feed these three values into it as well. So I want to make sure that my user automatically gets these uh, names. So let's go ahead and say, Let's have an init in here. Now, init is one of those built-in functions of a class that basically initializes my class. And we will see in a second how it works. In here, for my initialization, I'm going to say, when you want to initialize, you have to give me a name, a photo name, and a UID. So here, I'm going to say m name, which is of the type of string, and m photo name, which is again of the type of string, and also MUID, which is also again of the type of string. So whenever we call the initialize, user has to enter these three values at any point or the application should feed these three values. So within the statements of it, I'm going to say self.name becomes mname. So whatever name you enter, that becomes the name of this new object. 
also self dot uh, photo name becomes m photo name and then self dot uh, uid becomes m uid which basically means if you initialize using this init function we basically set the values of our uh, object based on those how do we use this i'm going to come in here in for instance my view did load i'm going to say variable let's say i want to make a user for myself so i'm going to call this one a mere user or you could call it user one or anything like that and then that user becomes user and here is what i was talking about initializing now if i open this bracket it says hey there is an initialization there is an init that you can actually feed three arguments to it and it will initialize a new object for you i'm going to say yes that's what i want to be using in here i'm going to put my name for the photo name of it i'm just going to say uh, my image.jpg it doesn't really matter at this in this case and for the uid i'm just going to add a combination of numbers what does matter in here is that we managed to make a user called uh, amir with this photo name and that uid and the init basically helped us put all those arguments within our main uh, properties basically now we could do a lot of things with these users obviously we kind of need them but if, for instance if we had 10 different users uh, we could put them in an array and for instance if i was searching for a user with my name i could go ahead and say within that array if user one dot name was let's say we are looking for a user called adam and if that was the case then we do something with them and that's basically how we make our classes and how we make our objects uh, one more time just as a quick recap of everything classes are like the blueprint that they decide how things they get built in our case our class basically allows us to make users we have different kinds of units uh, this is one of them i will show you another one in one of the upcoming lessons and then classes they have their uh, properties and functions both of these are obviously optional you may or may not have properties or functions and then whenever we want to instantiate one of these objects we basically call the user using its init uh, block and then based on the init block we feed the right arguments to it and we make our new objects so right now we have the object of user one with this name and then we can do things such as you know testing on them something i would recommend as an exercise for yourself is that try to make multiple users put them all in an array and then search for a certain user and find out if that user actually uh, exists within that array and once you're done with that let's keep it up to here and let's you know move on to our next lesson